Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where you can hate my poetry, but I'd rather you hate the podcast. But you could also hate my poetry. That's fine. This is going to be a weird episode because I got a live stream in a little bit. <laughs> and it's Mother's Day and me and my mom have been playing phone tag all morning. So when my mom calls, I'm going to have to take a break. I just want to thank everyone who um, has been listening to the show and sending in emails and sending in comments. Um, it's awesome to know that anyone gives a fuck about the shit that I do. So I want to thank you guys for that. Um, and I also want to thank everyone who's going out there and um, leaving um, ratings on the show. And on iTunes, someone else has given this a one-star review. So awesome. So thank you so much. As much as it might not seem like it, I appreciate it. Because what a lot of people don't understand about how... Um, ratings and algorithms work it works when there is any kind of interaction so whether you are giving me a great review or a shitty review that helps the algorithm push the podcast out because that shows that people are having interactions with it whether it's on youtube with the like and the dislike dislikes help just as much as likes do um, it's just a weird fucking thing that algorithms do. So I appreciate that. So what I wanted to talk about a little bit today is kind of do a in defense of writers thing. Since the episode I did a couple ago about um, that was basically in defense of the small press <laughs> went so hard. Um, I feel like I owe it to writers to kind of do a little something more for them and kind of talk about like writer's rights and answer some of the questions that I got from the last hurrah when I did all that shit. But somebody just tried to come into my apartment again, so I'm going to go lock my door. I don't know what it is lately, but the coffee has been getting better. And it's the same coffee. It just tastes better. So I don't know. Maybe I'm finally getting all of that, like, COVID crap out of my mouth. Oh, and then somebody asked me, somebody asked me um, if I do a little sniff um, because I'm kind of a lot on the videos. Dude, springtime, allergy season. I am on fucking Claritin and fucking nose spray all the fucking time. It, it's just, it's bad. Um, so it'll be like this until probably July, August, and then it'll start to taper off a little bit. So um, just in case you were wondering. And then for those of you who don't know, I don't do drugs of any kind, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, because I have a bit of an addictive personality, if you haven't noticed. I smoke, I drink like 7,000 cups of coffee a day, a uh, bottle of wine a night, at least. I don't need any more vices. And so the idea of taking anything that could like become addictive freaks me the fuck out. So um, yeah, I, I stay away from all sorts of coke, tweak, speed, whatever. Fuck, I haven't even had opiates in years. But yeah, so um, I'm just I'm just a fucking drunk, guys. I don't even smoke pot. Like, I don't like the taste of weed when I'm smoking it. I like the smell of it when other people are smoking it. I love that smell. But like, when I'm smoking it, I really dislike the experience of it. And I also don't like knowing... I don't like being, like, tired. I don't like being chill. I always feel like I'm wasting my time and I should be doing other things. And when um, you smoke sativa, it's like your body is like taking the day off, but your mind knows that you're fucking wasting your life away. And that's even worse. So that's that's my little uh, trip down 
um, drug culture lane. All right, so let's look at some of the comments I got, because I think that's going to actually help get into the conversation that I'm trying to do right now. Ethan says, preach, brother. <laughs> Poets and writ writers need to have that hungry hip-hop rapper mindset. Well, if anyone knows anything about me, it's my hip-hop rapper mindset. No, I'm just kidding. You know, motherfuckers hustle, dude. That's what you got to do. Um, and as we'll find out in a minute here, not all writers feel that way. So I got uh, quite a few people like apologizing to me, and that's that's not what I was looking for. And I'm gonna talk about that in a minute, bit, in a minute bit. Um, and then Booknick said, I remember 20 years ago, my best friend being thrilled about getting a poem published. He was like, yeah, I submitted it, paid my fee and they accepted it. And I was thinking for 30 bucks, it better get published. You got scammed, son. <laughs> uh, he didn't even get a free copy. He had to pay for it. Yeah. Things are like that sometimes. Shaylin had some things about like apologizing and stuff and... And I wasn't, uh, this, this is the thing that's weird. Like, I, I feel like when I say things, people are assuming I'm just talking about me. And for 95% of that episode, I was talking about writers I know, writers I know, who write and get their shit published in other stuff. The examples I was using that were pissing me off like nobody's business were mainly from Weird Mask and from Emzine. And the reason why I brought those two up specifically is because those two zines used to get um, the, their submissions sent out by Duotrope. And so I would get tons of submissions and I would be going through those and putting those things in and I would never hear from those writers again. Like... It would just be like, whoa, I got accepted in Weird Mask. Bleh. And then I would never hear another thing. But I'm not even saying that's all I'm talking about. Because I, especially on Twitter, because my Twitter account is old as fuck. A lot of writers who, I'm, who I follow on Twitter, I've been following for years. And I've been seeing them talk about how they're getting into all this stuff. But I never see them post links of where to get the stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's the main thing. But Shaylin said, I think what you're asking for is hella reasonable. We as a community need to build clout and make poetry relevant. Give them hell. Yeah, she said a lot of cool shit. The biggest back and forth I had was actually with uh, Chill Baby. And I'm going to be reading this and then talk to you guys a little bit about it. Writers write to become writers. No one thinks, I want to be a writer. I should spend my time learning about marketing and selling myself. And maybe they should. Whatever. But to some, mentioning their acceptance is them trying to push themselves. Mentioning it a second time when it comes out feels like they're annoying people when you're not built to be a pusher. There's nothing wrong with knowing your strengths and weaknesses. Finding people to work with that have complementary strengths and weaknesses who are natural pushers and sellers of art. Working together is a good thing and has shown to be profitable, efficient, and successful. Not everyone is a one-man show and you don't have to be. You can only get so far without help and you will probably exhaust yourself if being a salesman is something that depletes your soul. Now, a lot of people might not realize this, but like... Me being a pusher and a salesman totally depletes my soul, okay? But I think the difference between me and other people, and I'm not saying this to suck my dick or anything, but I think because I came from a world where my art was also my job, I didn't have a choice. I couldn't, like, fall back on anything, you know, it's not like I could be like, oh, well, you know, whatever. Like, I, I, I just, there's a part of me that feels sometimes like that would be amazing to just create art and never worry about the business side of everything. But at the same time, that freaks me the fuck out because no one is willing 
to do the thing that I want done with my art. No one's willing to like be my pusher. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like a lot of people out there who are writers are just going, you know what? I don't even need a pusher. If I get it, great. If not, great. The other argument I had with this is that no one needs a degree to share their art. Okay? Like, if you are a painter, you paint stuff and you show people what you painted. You know what I'm saying? Like, you hang it up and there it is. If you are a musician, you write songs and you usually will either like record them so people can hear them or you play live so people can hear them. And for some reason with the written word, I feel like it's like this like double, triple, like, oh, no one should ever know that I'm doing this because it's embarrassing or something like that. And I like, I guess because I have done many forms of art I don't understand that. I don't think it has anything to do with being like salesy or anything like that. It's just showing your art. Like if you create art, you show it to people because it's art. If you don't want to do that, then it's really just a hobby. It's something you do to entertain yourself if you're never going to show it to anybody. You know what I'm saying? So, there's that. Um, Chill Baby continues. Also, man, how do you know people aren't pushing their publications? Word of mouth is still a thing. Not everyone is an internet hound. Lots of poets deal with mental health shit and exhaustion, brain fog, and just feeling like shit is a big part of that sometimes, as you know. People do what they can. They may not be able to... Uh, throw a parade this year about their published poem, but it did give them the motivation to keep working, to keep going. And while this year they may they may have only been able to mention it to friends and family, maybe next year they will have healed enough to have the energetic bandwidth to start an IG or something. Um, and let me just talk about Instagram for a minute. I don't give a shit where people talk about stuff. Okay. If you, ha I, I don't really post a whole lot on Instagram and I really don't post a lot on Twitter. I post stuff on my website. I post stuff on YouTube because YouTube is kind of like my home, um, as far as social media goes. And I send stuff out on my mailing list periodically, which I should be doing a lot more of. Okay. And again, I'm not and when I was doing my fucking spiel, I mentioned tagging people and all this other stuff and saying, like, I haven't been tagged and blah, 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 blah. I, I understand that I said it like that and, that and that was just me running my mouth. I don't have a script when I do these things. I just talk like I am now. Again, the, the main people I'm talking about are people who for years have been doing this. I'm not talking about people who have just started this is why, like, Anarchy Crew people getting, like, bummed out and feeling like I was talking to them, I wasn't talking to them. The reason why people are in the Anarchy Crew is to learn how to do this shit. And that's what, like, my job is to help you guys get to the point where you can do this stuff. I was not talking to you guys. Most of you do not have a full platform yet. Okay? So, obviously, I'm not talking to you guys about that. I'm talking about people who have been doing this and have been doing this for years and still are like afraid to either get their stuff out there or for some reason thinks below them to promote the publishers who put their stuff out. That's it. And I'm not even talking about my stuff like my like I'm talking for publishers everywhere. You know what I'm saying? It's I'm not just talking about like no one's posting pictures of the blood rag. I'm not doing that. Okay, but the funny thing is, I do that I did that episode and a bunch of people started posting shit about the blood rag. That was not my intent, but I, like I appreciate that you guys did that. You know what I'm saying? But like I don't want you to do this like 
my my goal was not to make you feel guilty so you would guilt promote your stuff my my goal with that whole thing i was saying was just for writers to understand that if they are like banking on small presses to promote them as writers it's only fair that they do the same thing and promote the small presses as publishers. You see what I'm saying? This kind of goes back to what Chill Baby's saying here, that like maybe this year they're not going to say anything online, but maybe next year they will. If you are writing as a hobby, why are you even submitting your stuff anywhere? Like, I feel like, and again, this whole idea is the reason why publishers are like, oh, well, if I charge submission fees, it will weed out the casual writers. So, like, both of these people are doing things to fuck themselves with each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're not going to take your writing seriously, then don't submit anywhere. If you are taking your writing seriously, and you want to do this as a career then think about the things you can do to make that happen. This is what trips me out. This is what totally boggles my mind. If you decided that you were going to be a psychiatrist, okay, you would go to school to be a psychiatrist, okay? But then when you get out of school, are you going to, like, not tell anybody you have a degree in psychology? Are you not going to apply for any jobs, Okay, so let's say you do apply for a job somewhere, and you do get accepted. You get hired. Are you then going to sit in your office and not tell anyone that you work there? And not try to get patients? Like, think of any career out there. Any line of work of any kind. And start using this, this whole idea that, you know, just writers aren't pushers. You know, like they don't have to be. Okay, then those writers aren't doing it to be professional writers. They're doing it as a hobby. And that's fine if that's what you want to do. But if you're doing it as a hobby, maybe you should clear the space for the people who want to do it as a profession. And just like hone your craft until you decide you're ready to take that step. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm not saying everyone... And here's the other thing about this. There isn't a tr tried and true way of promoting yourself and marketing yourself and selling yourself. There are tons of different ways you can do this. Okay, there, there's... You don't have to use Instagram. And honestly, from all studies I've seen, and just like with me too... Social media, like Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, account for like at most 3% of your sales, okay? Like with if you took Facebook out of the equation and we're just looking at Twitter and Instagram, you're looking at probably 1%. 1% of the sales you're going to make, and this doesn't matter like how big or small you are. Okay, like if you sell almost nothing or if you sell a million copies of something, Twitter and Instagram, your like ROI on your ads and whatever the hell you do on there is going to be anywhere from one to three percent. Facebook could be a little bit more if you pay for ads and then you're, I don't know, it's like. The more you pay, if anyone was actually curious on how Facebook ads work, if you, this is like a very like basic level shit on Facebook ads. So if you are really good at setting up like your niche markets and your target audiences and all that other shit, um, typically if you want to make money with Facebook ads, you need to be spending around $3,000 to $3,200 a month on your ads in order to make more than $3,000 a month.
and I know that sounds crazy, but there are tons of people, writers, who that's like their like um, game plan, and it works. Um, and again, a lot of it I think has to do with Facebook saying we're not going to let everyone who follows you see your posts unless you pay for it. And that seems to be the magic number. So if you have $3,000 to burn every month, um, definitely get into Facebook ads if that's something you're interested in. But whatever. Um, that's a whole other thing. Uh, Chill Baby continues, everyone's at different points on their journey and they probably were not aware that this sub clause to being accepted again in the blood rag was that they crossed some Matt approved threshold of advertising. This is so fucked. <laughs> and I know Chill Baby doesn't mean any fucking shit against me, but like, again, this isn't fucking Matt approved. It's like, what the fuck are you doing this for if you're not going to promote the places that push your shit? It's just like courtesy. I, I don't know another way of saying it. Like, it's advertising, it's marketing, it's letting people know that your art is out there, but it's also letting people know about the, um, the venue that has your stuff in it. And again, this isn't just about my shit. It's about all the fucking people that I've been following for years. And all of the places that they don't promote. You know, if you asked every small press publisher, every little magazine publisher, every zine publisher, and asked, hey, do you wish your contributors, um, like, promoted your site more? Or promoted your zine more or anything like that guaranteed every single one of them 100 percent of them would say yeah i would really like it if they did that like this isn't like rocket science this isn't me saying anything weird and i mean you can turn this into uh oh well this is just like matt has this insane like threshold of what um he likes is out it has nothing to fucking do with that. It's just what it is. And on the other side of that, there are publishers out there who don't promote anything. And they're usually small presses and they're usually fledgling, like they're, they're new startups, they're new presses that are trying to do the thing, but just aren't that good at it yet. And if any of you out there have ever had a book put out by a small press, you might know what I'm talking about. Your book comes out. Nobody knows about it. Um, there's no reviews about your book anywhere. And if the reviews do come, it's months later. And by that time, the small press is already excited about pushing the next person they're pushing. And pushing, I mean nudging. You know what I'm saying? Like... It happens on both sides. But again, I was focusing more on the idea that writers don't fucking do anything. Uh, lots of people grow up and live in places where art, writing, creative business is non-existent and have no idea how or what any of this shit is. That argument, I think, worked before the internet, but like, there's no reason why people can't figure out how to tell people that they have done something. This this isn't like rocket science. And earlier in your um, comment here, you said, like, how do you know people aren't telling their friends and family? Okay, cool. People are telling their friends and family. That's a start. Good job. I like that. But just saying, like, well, there's no art scene where I live. Like, that is... There's no art scene where you live because there's no art scene where you live. So, and this is like a bigger thing. Like if you need to be the one to create the art scene where you live and it's important to you, then do it. If not, the internet is right there for you. And I was talking about globally versus locally a little bit and I've been threatening an episode about that. And this is a prime example of that. 
I'm still kind of foggy on what a fucking zine is exactly, lol, just because I've never seen one in person or held one in my hands. I've never even heard the word until my late 20s in a movie that was set in the 1970s. And then by you 10 years later mentioning it on YouTube. Um, what movie is that? First off, um, it sounds amazing. Uh, do you see what I'm saying? And the communities they live in may be the same way. You may be asking people to pioneer the introduction of poetry readings, broadsides, and what have you to towns where it may take a lot of time for people to understand the purpose, accept that it's a worthy purpose, and then support it by buying, reading, attending open mics, or whatever. Infrastructure and public knowledge takes time and effort to cultivate. It's kind of like springing democracy on a culture that's not educated yet about democracy. And poetry is often controversial anyways. Encouragement to do and start this huge task of publicizing yourself is good, but understand not everyone lives in the same world you do, has the same experiences to draw from, or is built to exist the way you are. There are infinite ways to get somewhere, and we all find our stride. Okay, with this said, I want you to just notice something. And I'm not, like, picking on you here, but, like, this is a public comment here, so whatever. Okay, so where it says you may be asking people to pioneer the introduction of poetry readings, broadsides, and what have you. I'm not saying anyone needs to pioneer anything. I'm just saying if you want to do something, do it. If you don't want to do any of this, don't fucking do it. You know, you don't have to do this. No one's twisting your fucking arm. Encouragement to do and start this huge task of publicizing yourself is good. Okay, when you say certain things, it shows a lot about you. To start this huge task of publicizing yourself is good, but... Okay, so right now you think publicizing yourself is a huge task. It's not. It's just letting people know that you do stuff it's sharing your art you know like why why do you do anything like what's the point of creating something and putting it out if publicizing yourself is a huge task it's not a huge task it's the thing that you do when you create something and share it with somebody it's only huge if your mind is saying it's a huge, big thing, don't do it. Like, oh, this is scary. Don't do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could have used any word there to describe what publicizing yourself is. But you use the word huge task. That says a lot about how you feel about letting people know that you create art. That's all I'm saying. It's a mindset thing. So instead of all of this stuff that you said here, which is all good stuff, and I'm glad you shared it, it really just boils down to the fact that you think it's a huge task to do something. And yes, a lot of people are wired differently. A lot of people have issues with like wanting to talk to people or doing anything or coming up with like new and creative ways to get their stuff out there without coming off. Um, pushy and salesy, but usually the people who say like, I don't really like it. And, you know, when people come off pushy and salesy are the people who say that because they don't want to do that. Like think of how much you're bombarded every day with salesy shit. Like you say a pizza and then the next thing you know, you're on Instagram and it's telling you to buy a pizza. You say, what else you say anything and your phone's like oh okay i know what to give you now it's the same thing and when that happens to you you accept it well people say yeah but i don't like it of course you guys don't like it but how many of you clicked on those links like oh timu i could get something for two dollars let me see more like you can say all up and down that you don't like pushy, salesy people. But at the end of the day, like pushy, salesy 
works for a reason. Like, there wouldn't be people out being able to sell all the shit they sell if pushy salesy didn't work. And pushy salesy is kind of like a shitty way of saying it, but at the other, on the other si- side of that, what that is actually called is advertising. And advertising, it doesn't sound as evil as pushy, you know? But it's that whole thing. Like, you need to be sold something seven times before you're like, oh, okay. Like, you need to have it, like, shown to you, like, seven times. Like, buy this book, 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 buy this book. book." And then you're like, oh, maybe I'll buy that book. You need to see that ad for um, an amazing um, standing desk that moves up and down seven times before you actually click that ad you need to see that um free write little typewriter that doesn't come with the internet seven times before you actually click on it to see that it costs more than a fucking car you know what i'm saying like it's just advertising like none of this is like new none of this is scary none of this is something that we haven't heard before So, like, all I'm saying is telling somebody that you, hey, if you want to read this poem I wrote, click here. That's not salesy. That's like, hey, if you like my shit, go look at this thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not asking you to fucking, like, be fucking Don Draper and figure out the best way to sell Lucky Strike cigarettes. You know? Like... It's just telling people that you did something for fuck's sake. Um, We do what we can and try not to hate ourselves by comparing our efforts to that of the great Matt Wall. Because you are great. Allow people to be great on their own levels and in their own ways. They may be meek now, but they may be lions later. Have patience for the momentum that builds in the slingshot of the late bloomer. All of this may have nothing to do with what you think it does. Ego or lack of will or appreciation or what have you. Now, here's the thing. All of this stuff sounds great. And again, I'm not saying everyone has to do everything that I do right now for the rest of forever. And especially with Anarchy Crew people. Like, you guys are in the Anarchy Crew... So you can, like, write more, learn how to do this, and hopefully some of the things that have worked for me can work for you. Okay? I'm not picking on you guys. I'm picking on people who have been doing this for years, claim to be professionals, and then don't do the fucking thing that is very fucking simple to do. Letting people know that this small press has put their work out, and this is where you can check it out. That was the crux of the argument. This is not me picking on people who are new to this. This isn't me picking on people who are like thinking like, I don't know if like I'm ready to do all this stuff yet. I'm a late bloomer. This I'm not doing any of that. And like there's a part of me that wants to go, well, you know, if you took like great offense to the episode I did, maybe that's you saying like, oh, shit. Maybe I need to actually do something. Like usually when people take the most offense to something, it's because they're the most guilty of that thing. Now, I'm not saying Chill Baby's like this. Me and Chill Baby have a very good relationship and I'm not trying to start any shit with Chill Baby. I'm hoping that like Chill Baby understands that I'm using this comment as an example, not like it's written by Chill Baby, but in case you guys also feel this way, Here's what I would say to this. There was a little bit more here. Um, I'm sure all the social anxiety that writers are pigeonholed for also exists in other creative people. Musicians especially have managers and booking agents who do all that shit for them. And you don't need have to be super famous to get that kind of help. But let me tell you something. You need to do something so people know that you fucking exist in order to get that help. And a lot of times when you get that help, a lot of people are like, well, my girlfriend could be my band manager. (laughs) And we all know how that fucking goes. 
nowhere. It's garbage and people fucking laugh at you. So if you want someone who's actually good at that, you need to be doing enough shit to where people know you fucking exist. And in order to get a booking agent, you pe- the booking agent has to hear your music. So how did that happen? Like you had to go record something somewhere or you had to play live somewhere in front of a booking agent. Okay. So if you're doing that, that means you're sharing your shit. Okay. And if you're sharing your shit, that completely negates what I'm talking about. Because again, I'm talking about writers who get accepted places and then don't tell anyone when it comes out. Okay. So that's that. Um, I see the source of your frustration. Your fr- your frustration is still legitimate. And it's still good for me to get a kick in the pants every now and then. I always prefer teachers, mentors who challenge me because I'm a person who rises to meet things. It makes me better, broadens me, wakes me up. Um, I'm just a cooler. You're a fire starter. I do me, you do you. <laughs> so thank you, Chill Baby, for that comment. And please don't take it anything personal that I just brought up. Um, JH said some stuff too that I wanted to end this part of the episode on. Ooh, I do get both sides of this. I'm also sometimes frustrated by people who just create, create art and then don't promote their stuff. While I also genuinely get why they don't. In many cases, it has to do with the thickness of your skin and how vulnerable you're willing to be. But yeah, some people basically just want others to do everything for them. I'm only referring to writers I know over here, not people that could be reading this comment. Not that there's necessarily anything wrong with that idea per se, but I don't think it's very grounded in reality. Even if you're discovered by one of the major publishers here and get a fancy agent and everything, it simply isn't enough anymore. You need to actively promote your stuff. But more importantly, I think people need to start coming together more and promote one another and make a lot of noise. And that is like a beautiful way of saying it. Like, as artists, as writers, as poets, like, we need to have each other's back and do all that shit. And so, like, on an episode a while back, I was saying, like, if you read somebody's stuff that you really like, fucking, like, forward it or share it on your page or share it as a reel or whatever or to your story if you're on instagram and shit you know let people see other stuff that's good you know and especially if you have a lot of like non-poetry people on your social media if you keep sharing stuff that's good people will latch on to it who wouldn't normally do it anyway you know what i'm saying i also got Um, quite a few messages from someone and I probably shouldn't even talk about this because it it, I don't I just don't give a fuck so whatever I got a lot of messages from some anonymous bullshit thing of somebody who is a complete racist and homophobe and somehow thought that by saying a bunch of stupid shit along those lines that it would make me feel I don't even know like I I don't I don't get the small dick energy that a lot of people who do this kind of shit have it's just not anything I've ever understood so I'm not going to read the comments, obviously. Um, they were reported. Um, they were blocked. So hopefully whatever. But this person who had a um, horrible racial stereotype image as their picture and a horrible name is the name of who they were started leaving all these messages um, comments in the thread for the show and I'm assuming that this person is a writer and got their um, tiny panties in a bunch and needed to just 
you know, let loose. And the funny thing is, I think I know who it is because this isn't the first time they've done this. And um, using the same thing in the same channel or account or whatever. Um, and, and they think they're super fucking clever. And just so you know, like this, this might come as a shock to you. I know who you are. And a bunch of other people on YouTube know who you are. We've talked about it like multiple times. Because again, this isn't the first time you've done this. And um, it's just, it's whatever. So take that as you will. But this idea that calling someone a bunch of homophobic names and stuff and like saying like, oh yeah, you know, you live off of Melrose, so we all know what that means. And all this other, like, ridiculous... I mean, your stereotypes aren't even right. If you want to come at me like that, you say WeHo, dude. Like, West Hollywood. Like, get it straight. Like, if you're going to start, like, coming at me with your, um, like, California is, like, liberal hell and, like, we need to eviscerate them or eradicate them in order for our country to be good and all that other ridiculous shit when you come at me and like compare me or call me homophobic slurs that is good like that doesn't bother me at all because the strongest people i've ever met in my life are gay men like Hands down, the gay men in my life have gone through so much shit that you could never imagine in your pea-sized freaking lizard brain, okay? Like, you have no idea what, what balls they had to have to go through what they did. The weakest man thing I could possibly imagine is some middle-aged white dude sitting at home on his computer with a fake account saying racial slurs and homophobic slurs to somebody, thinking that they're a big dude. That is the weakest small dick shit I've ever fucking heard of. So if you want to see what a man is, find yourself a gay man in his 50s. That's a fucking man. That dude's been through it and is braver and stronger than you will ever be. So no, that doesn't offend me or hurt me when you say those things to me. It makes me realize how weak and fragile you are. So fucking suck on that. And dude, like, should we even fucking talk about all these fucking losers who are mad at Bud Light? Dude, I will fucking bathe in Bud Light now. Any douchebag that needs to go out and buy cases of Bud Light, which helps Bud Light, to make videos of them shooting cans of Bud Light is the smallest dick move I could possibly imagine. There's nothing more weak than somebody with an assault rifle. Like, you feel like you need to have some high-powered thing in order to not be murdered? In order to not die? You need to have this fucking weapon of war because you're so scared that somebody might take you or hurt you like you gotta be the biggest wuss ever to feel masculated by holding a giant phallic thing that sprays lead it's just it's sad it's really, really sad. But anyway, en- enough about that. Like, like you're a fucking loser, and that's fine. Like, 
I wouldn't have fucking done or said anything about it except the person who was doing it started leaving these comments in comments that other people left. And um, so, like, I can't have that. Probably by me saying this, they're going to get all upset and their little soul will be crushed. And so they'll feel like they'll have to do this more. They'll start new accounts saying the exact same fucking thing and think, well, I showed him. Great. Whatever. I'll just block it and report it and we'll do the whole fucking thing. And you can do this until one of us is going to start looking really stupid. Okay. I don't give a shit. And I'll let you decide who the, who's going to look like a fucking dumbass for doing this over and over and over again. Thinking that they're getting one over on me. So, whatever, dude. Hopefully, someday you'll learn. I don't know. Like, most people I know or have heard of who act like this are really, like, closeted homosexuals who are afraid to say anything because they live in a state that does not allow that and lives in a family that is so fucking biblical and right wing, they don't allow that either. And so this is like, if I can't join them, attack them kind of thing, you know? And so whatever, like you, you'll you do what you got to do. Hopefully one day you'll wake up and you'll go, God, all that porn I've been watching. I'm really watching it. Cause I love to see cock and balls. You know, maybe that epiphany will just like hit in your head and you'll go, dude, Maybe I should try this out. Get a Grinder account. Maybe you don't know about Grinder. Look it up. Just quit being crazy. Nobody fucking cares. Grown ass man, dude. Fake accounts. Jesus Christ. I, I wish you well and I hope you can pull your head out of your ass. Okay? That's it. <sighs> Another thing I want to say about writers is that, like I was saying about. Um, small press is fucking you over. Make sure you have contracts, you know, that say what, like if someone's going to put your book out, make sure, and most places will have contracts. I can't imagine anyone not doing a contract with somebody in today's age, but make sure you have a contract that says like what is expected from both parties and not just you. You know what I'm saying? Like that's huge. And hold them to that contract. And you are also allowed to negotiate your contract. So let's say they say, we have your book for five years. Okay? Try to knock it down to three. If you think you can get a better deal later. If you don't want to deal with all that shit, then just take what they have. But you are allowed to like, come back with certain things. Like, Don't feel like you can't do that. The other thing I wish small presses would do, and even big presses like magazines and shit, if you're going to want writers to fucking submit to you and fucking pay for it, you should at least have it fucking shown on your site or in the submission thing or whatever what your circulation is. Like, if you're expecting people to pay like 10 bucks to submit something to you, and your like circulation is only like 50 copies like why would anyone fucking do that and pay that but if your circulation is like a thousand or two thousand like having someone go well i could pay 10 bucks maybe get into this magazine that'll be seen by like three thousand people that's not that's not bad like i don't know what the roi on that is but you know that's a lot of eyeballs like fuck it you know like let's throw caution to the wind you know so i think that should be something that small presses do and if you're doing it on a website i can't imagine people charging writers to have their shit posted on a website but i guess it's possible um they should have like their like website stats and then some of you go well they're just bots man so, I don't know. Maybe that's true. Who knows? I, I would go for unique clicks. Um, that would be interesting. So, that's something um, to look at. I noticed um, LitHub was talking about this other thing where they want, writers want magazines to say how much of their stuff is 
solicited and how much of it is submission based. So like, like for me, like I told you guys last time, so bloodshed review is going to be strictly solicited. Although the blood rag I'm accepting submissions for kind of thing. Um, because a lot of people say like, well, you know, um, when like publishers and editors solicit material from writers, they're asking for them to send stuff in they're more excited about that. They're going to give that more time. They're going to read that with like a happier demeanor than they would on the slush pile of submissions they have to go through. And they're just like, oh, fuck me. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's cool. I think that's a good thing that magazines should do. Like how, what is the percentage of solicitation versus cold submissions? It's a great idea. And that gives writers an idea like, oh, okay, so I'm going to spend 15 bucks to send this poem to a place that only accepts 10% submissions and everything else is solicited. Like, that's a horrible fucking deal. Fuck that. Don't do that. Do you guys see what I'm saying? And like I said on that episode, you don't need magazines anymore. Like, you can build an audience, like, one person at a time. And it takes a while But you can do that. Like, there is a good possibility that the people who read your chapbook that you put out, more people will read that than ever would have read your poem in a magazine. Because that's the other thing people don't get. Just because you're in a magazine doesn't mean that everyone who gets that magazine is going to read your work. Think about this. How many magazines do you have that you have read from cover to cover? But have you ever purchased a magazine, like any kind of magazine, okay? Do you read every single article that's in there? Do you read every bit of print that is in that magazine? For most of you, the answer to that is going to be no. So, like, you're not even guaranteed that these people are going to read it. But what are you guaranteed? Resume clout. I have been published by blankety blank blank blankety blank. Okay? And that's good. That helps you the next time you submit to schnoogly boodly pop. You know what I'm saying? Like, they read that shit. I don't know. It's crazy. It's cray cray. If you are a writer, and especially if you're a new writer, know that it's okay to tell people that you write stuff. And you don't have to have social media. It helps, but you don't have to have it. Just keep doing stuff and let people know that you're doing it. However big or small that is to you. Let people know. People want to read your stuff. Especially if people find you because they've read your stuff somewhere. They want more. Okay? When I find a poet I like, I want to read all of their shit. So definitely just keep that train going. You know what I'm saying? And again, it takes a bit. It's not going to be an overnight thing. Most overnight successes take 10 years to become an overnight success. You know, that's just how it goes. Perseverance, my friends. So let's get into the butt plugs. Butt plugs. Okay, so let's hit the shout outs here. I want to give a big thank you to the people who make this show possible. Over on Patreon, I want to give a thank you to Michael, to Cedar, to Harry. Over um, on the YouTube, thank you, Cruz. I want to give a thank you to Patrick, to Britt, to JH, to Jan, to Deb, to Ethan, and to Julia. You guys are awesome. Um, <clears throat> oh, and I said JH in there, but guess what? JH is now a member of the Anarchy Crew. So, I want to thank the Anarchy Crew. Bunny, Nate, Mindy, Thomas, Tim, Jay. Shaylin, Tim G, Chill Baby, Tamara, Adam, and J.H. Thank you, buddy. You're the shit. And now for the chappies over there in the Chapbook of the Month Club who got this sent to them just because. That is uh, Caitlin and Chase. Thank you guys so much. You guys are awesome. You guys keep this world go round. Me as an action figure, get that wherever you get my chapbooks. Etsy. Yeah, um, join the Anarchy Crew and you could get nearly 150 videos of lessons, assignments, writing prompts, writing Zooms, 
all sorts of shit. You also get um, weekly live streams and we're doing the Bukowski book club now too, which is going to last a year. So that'll be an, another added bonus thing there for you. Plus the writing zooms. Um, this week we did um, writing about your life as a metaphor. And that was kind of fun. Um, we got a lot of cool shit out of that. So um, definitely join the uh, click the link down below to join the Anarchy Crew or the Thank You Crew if you want to do that. Or if you're a bad mamma jamma, you can join the Chapbook of the Month Club. See, I just did some pushy salesy shit and it didn't really feel that dirty. <laughs> oh my God, fuck me. Okay, so um, coming soon, there is going to be some sort of um, podcast episode with me and Matthew Buckley Smith from the Slee Ricketts Podcast. Um, I've been editing it for a while because we just got on a call together just to hang out and talk because I haven't talked to him in a while. And then um, while we, as the thing went, I'm like, maybe we should be recording this because this is some good shit. And then as soon as I started recording it, we went back to talking about bullshit and nothing. So there's little glimmers of amazingness in there. So I'm trying to put that together and make it um, cohesive. Because it's all over the place. But anyway, it was a lot of fun. So that's coming. And um, have a happy Mother's Day to all the sexy moms out there. I hope you guys had a good day. So until next time, everybody. Keep buying my books. Type hard. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.